Hello everybody and thank you for joining me for this weekend's event video. It is the ranked draft for Ravnica Allegiance. I will be doing this uh, until I lose out, so with any luck I will win seven games at least and get some nice fatty rewards. My name is Justice, my handle is Arcantuna. Um, you can subscribe to this channel for all of the weekend events like this and deck techs for your average free-to-play account, which is what I do. It's all free-to-play. And for this video, I will be using the DraftSim.com tool for draft ratings and rankings for when I need help. I'm pretty familiar with Ravnica Allegiance, so I don't think I'll need all that much help, but, you know, probably three or four cards out of the pack I will be checking on until, it's, until it comes down to the common sense um, picks. Oh, before I do this draft, though, I did want to talk about some of the weekend events that are happening right now. Um, and that is it's a toss-up between the Sealed Ravnica Allegiance event <clears throat> and the draft. No, not the Sealed event. Um, the Competitive Metagame Challenge. This guy. Um, if you're free to play like me, this event is not for us. Um, it's gold for gold, but it's too high risk, right? So it's 2,000 gold, and you've got to win... Uh, it's best of threes, <clears throat> and if you win zero games, you get 500 gold back, so it's a waste of 1,500 gold. It's a total, complete waste. If you win two games, you get a pack and 1,500 gold back. So you have to win two matches. So you have to win six out of nine. It's, it's not worth, for me, it's not worth the gold. So I am sticking with the ranked Ravnica Allegiance draft for this weekend's event. It's going to cost me 5,000 gold, which I have saved up. No problem. I'm ready for it. We'll go ahead and do it. <clears throat> Benthic Biomancer. He adapts for one. <clears throat> and as a card draw, it's not bad. I don't mind high alert. I don't mind Combine Guild Mage either. I think Mortify might be higher than... Benthic Biomancer, but I think we're on Benthic Biomancer. I'm just going to double check. You know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and hide my camera for you guys so you can see all of the uh, all of the cards. Yep, just like that. And we'll we'll take a look at Benthic Biomancer. It's he's down pretty low. Um, so I'm going to check on some of these other uncommons just to make sure I'm not making a pick. Oh, Benthic Biomancer is real low. Okay, cool. So that's good. So we're on for High Alert, Combine Guild Mage, or Shark to Crab. Otherwise, it's going to be a common, and I do not see a very nice uh, common in here. So I think we're going to be on potentially High Alert or Combine Guild Mage. Maybe Shark to Crab. Maybe. Let's check it out. Shark to Crab is, is 51st on the list. High Alert's in the hundreds. And our Guild Mage is way down there in, in the 80s. So yeah, we're on Shark to Crab. Imagine that. So I would not have guessed that as my first pick in this pack, but it is. So initially we're looking like Simic, but I'm not really going to worry about um, which, although... Although, this has got Simic written all over it, doesn't it? Wow. <laughs> if, we, if we pick up Gyre Engineer, we could get Shark to Crab out on the fourth turn. Wait a minute. Although, we can get him on the fourth turn and then adapt him, potentially, with, like, Growth Spiral in there. Hmm, I like Growth Spiral. Clear the Mind is, isn't bad. Grotesque Demise is up there, and so is Consecrate and Consume. Oh, no, that's not the one. It's not Consecrate and Consume. Let me just double-check on Wilderness Reclamation, but I think we're going to be on for Growth Spiral. Yeah, Wilderness Reclamation is way down there. I'm not sure at this point if we should ignore Grotesque Demise. That's a super strong removal. Hmm. Blade Juggler isn't terrible. It's card draw. I'm going to pick up Grotesque Demise. Just for the early removal. And we still don't know 
what the bots are drafting here. So it would be super beneficial for us to go against whatever they're picking up. Bankrupt in Blood is not terrible. Clan Guild Mage isn't good. Rhythm of the Wild is not great. Law Mage's Binding is terrific. Sylvan Bush Strider isn't isn't all that great either. Okay, so this is not not a very good pack and since we're not quite on a certain color yet let's just grab the uh, the best most highest rated card I think it's gonna be law mages binding yep it's definitely law mages binding it's the 47th best card in the deck and now we've got if we pick up a red card run all five colors that's amazing galloping Lizrog isn't terrible When Galloping Lizrog enters the battlefield, you may remove any number of plus one plus one counters. Put twice that many on the Lizrog. So it's a five casting, three three with trample. Unless it's more than three three. Fairy Duelist. Fairy Duelist is, is, is pretty good. Rally to battle. It's too expensive. Concordia Pegasus is cool because it flies, right? I don't mind Death Touch creatures in draft because they're sort of they serve as removal and then or blockers and so you can fend off attackers really nicely that way but we're on Lizrog. let's grab it so this looks a lot like simic and maybe we can splash some white open the gates open the gates isn't bad i do want to take fireblade artist off the table though and burning tree vandal burning tree vandal is so good for card draw hmm the lockets are garbage. Justicar's portal doesn't have that much of a use in this. Okay, so let's grab the Fireblade Artist for sure. Okay, now we can start looking at, at other ill-gotten inheritance. <laughs> this actually isn't that bad. Smeltward Ignis isn't great. Okay, so we're going to take... I like Silhana Wayfinder, though, because you can look for a creature or a land, which is nice. Um, and this sort of changes the ratings, and now we're on to, like, power commons, so to speak. So we would be on for uh, Silhana Wayfinder or Ill-Gotten Inheritance. And there's no reason... These are both weighed for the same amount in terms of color, right? So there's no reason to get the green over the black. I've got two green and two black cards right now. So I could go either way with these, and I think I'm going to go with the scout creature rather than the enchantment. Yep, I'm going to do it. Macabre Mockery. Mm, I don't love Macabre Mockeries, or... It's not bad. If it stayed in play, I would love it a lot more. Gravel Hide, not what we're doing. Gift of Strength is a neat combat trick in the green space we could play. Yep, I'm, I'm going to grab it. I know these aren't the most terrific uh, cards to get, but I like Gift of Strength because if a creature snakes through, it deals more damage. <clears throat> Dead Revels. It's good. It's good. I like Growth Spiral better. card draw it's extra land it fits into the colors prying eyes no not good we'll go with growth spiral oh high alert came back sagittar's volley but there's not a lot of one health flyers out there right now except for like terramanders and stuff like that so i think we should grab why don't we grab the sylvan bush strider to use as an extra creature in case we need more of them or do we go with high alert <clears throat> if we're splashing white we could do high alert no 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 we don't need high alert i was thinking that was the other one okay sylvan bush strider it is for the creature i don't want wilderness reclamation not on this one we'll go through a spiral yep another bush strider I think we're safe to go with Simic. Open the gates over Root Snare. Um, I do have two Growth Spirals, so I don't think I need the Open the Gates. I know it's pretty strong, and Root Snare is not rated all that high, but if, uh, if 
If I time it right, we'll take the rubble reading. No one's playing rubble reading. A locket. Okay, we'll just sideboard the lockets right away. Open the gates. Why not? Spike wheel acrobat. I know I'm probably not playing red. Oh, but now I have the opportunity to splash black and rock a priest of the forgotten gods. This is pretty good. It's a two casting one, two. You sacrifice two other crits. It's good and constructed. Not it's it's still pretty highly rated. Let's see what it's rated at. <clears throat> Twenty-sixth. It is definitely the best card in this pack. So I'm gonna have to grab it. But it's well, and maybe we'll play it. We it's splashable. So we we might do that. Okay, so here's the question. This is again this is a good question. Frilled Mystic. Law Mage is binding, Growth Spiral or Applied Biomancy. Growth Spiral isn't rated all that high, so I don't think that's in there. Frilled Mystic is pretty high. It's 54th. And... Oh, I think we're good. Yep. We're good. We're going to take Frilled Mystic. It's a forecasting 3-2 with Flash and serves as a counterspell. Alright, we're good with that. Another Frilled Mystic. Let's just double check the pack. An ill-gotten inheritance. That's pretty good. A Scuttle Gator. Um, we don't need Scuttle Gators. Thought Collapse is not... Typically, you don't want to play a lot of counter spells in draft. Um, and I know in these, with the guild sets, you want to draft to your guild specifically at some point in the draft, or else you end up with an unplayable set and you get kind of rolled on. Persistent Petitioners can be strong, and they do fit into our color scheme. But they're very low rated in draft, so I'm going to assume that we are on for another Wayfinder. Doesn't seem like a very strong card, though, does it? But let's grab it. It serves as a digger, and I like digging. Where's our Racketeers? <laughs> it's kind of neat. Expensive, but still kind of neat. Okay, look. Well, it looks like the only thing that fits into our draft is going to be Scheme or uh, Quench. Sorry. Consigned to the Pit. An ill-gotten inheritance. I do not have enough removal. I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to pick up Black a little bit and drop some uh, Grotesque Demise. Undercity's Embrace is also removal that I need. I don't think I want counter spells. Um, so Spire Mangler is a flyer buff only for flyers. Steeple Creeper is is uh, something we would want to use, and it's got a, it's a one health flyer too. So Sagittarius Volley might help, but I'm gonna go with Undercity's Embrace because I need the removal. And at this point, I am pretty sure I'm going green, blue, and a little bit of black. Dovin's Acuity, it's nice. Now that I'm open to the idea of playing some black, I could use like Debtor's Transport as a bomb. But I like Steeple Creeper better with the optional flight, it's nice. We're definitely on Regenesis with this pick. Although Skitter Eel, let me just check on Skitter Eel versus Regener Regenesis. Skitter Eel is 141. Regenesis is 212. So it's definitely Skitter Eel with the adapt on. It's a forecasting 3 3, and then it adapts for less than that. So that'll, that'll be nice. Mm, yep, Soraform Hybrid. This is. Mm, it's not as strong, but. Dead Revels also isn't bad. Uh, but I'm going to go with Mammoth Spider for the reach. I know flying is pretty strong in, in draft. Growth spirals. Are we on for all the growth spirals? How funny would that be if, if that's what wins us the game? Um, Fairy Duelist is good, too. It's a decent combat trick. Anyway. I don't know if it's good, but it's a decent one. I'm going to grab it.
I like Rampaging Rendhorn as a top end, but I feel like I'm pretty expensive as it is. Six cards out of 40 are in my top end right now, so I'm going to go with the Soraform Hybrid. And then, mm, Blade Brand is also soft removal by giving a creature death touch, and you get to draw a card. That's kind of nice. So if I have a blocker, I can simply block, give it death touch, and I am going to be in the black space. So Quench is going to be out. We'll take the Blade Brand. I need more removal. Or this isn't going to work out very well. Um, we'll pick up a Thirsting Shade, even though it's not going to make the deck, I don't think. Okay, we'll take the Ill-Gotten. Another Thirsting Shade. We'll see. Okay, another Thirsting Shade. Okay. Um, we are definitely taking Judith. Um, if that happened to not be a Judith, I, I don't see a problem with like a combined guild mage maybe with this with this pack but we're going to be on the hook for Judith here. Eyes everywhere. I don't mind cuz you get the scry but it's probably not going to make the deck. Arrestor's admonition is cool um, because it returns a creature to its owner's hand. That's kind of nice to have. Another blade brand. That's also not not bad. Um and they're both card draw, so the more effective card draw is Blade Brand, giving a creature death touch, and I could draw a card. And it's target creature, so if I'm desperate, I can cast it on one of my opponent's creatures. And I think I've got enough creatures in here to be happy taking cards like that. Um, I'm definitely picking up the Incubation Druid. If not, the Incubation Druid, the Troll Red Guardian, both of those are really strong and green in the green adapt space, so this is... This is a terrific pack. Hopefully this comes back around. It won't, but hopefully. That's great. Don't need a Sunder Shaman. Homunculus is Hexproof, which I like. I like that a lot. Why don't we go with it? Go we'll grab him. No Macabre Mockery, Incubation, and Incongruity. Exile Target Creature. That creature creates a 3-3 three, three Green Frog Lizard Creature Token. Uh, that's not bad, um, but it's sort of soft removal. Unless you exile a creature smaller than a 3-3 three, three for some reason. You know, it's not going to get you out of a sticky spot if, if that's the case. Um, but I do like the incubation side. No, I don't. I don't like it. I think we're just on for the flyer. Even though we're not playing white, this is Azorius, but... Shoot. We'll grab it and see what happens. We're already way over our cards for the, for the, the deck we're going to end up playing. Thought Collapse? Steeple Creeper? Titanic Brawl is also good removal. If you have a big creature, you can have him fight. Thought Collapse is a standard counter spell that you would mill three of your opponents. It's not bad. Slime Bind is... Slime Bind is okay. Slime Bind is okay, too. Um, hmm. It's not bad. I like Steeple Creeper. It's more offensive. It's the way I like to play. Uh, yeah, are we taking the gate? We are. It's time. Tower defense. I would love this if they untapped, but I don't hate it as it stands. I like Mammoth Spider. I'm going to take the Mammoth Spider. High alert. We're on... How many Mammoth Spiders is that for us? That's two, and they cost five, so we're going to grab another Growth Spiral. Three Growth Spirals. Well, I've done crazier things. We'll grab the Axe Bane... Beast, it, I'll grab the Coral Commando. It's a little cheaper, and they're just creatures with, um, you know, just varying powers and toughnesses. I like, I like Gift of Strength better, so we'll grab it. It's two of those. Oh, boy. We'll just grab the Sylvan Bush Strider, be happy about it. Cobb Mockery pulls it off the table. 
blade brand. We're going to splash black anyways and be happy about splashing black. Okay, so we're at 57. The auto mana generator is going to give us planes for some reason. We'll take out law mages. It removes the planes. We are at 25 creatures. That is that is way plenty. So we'll cut creatures before non-creatures initially. I like Incubation Druid a lot. I don't mind Root Snare. I don't mind Root Snare at all. Silhana Wayfinders, those can go. We've got a couple of we've got the growth spirals in place of um, the digging, so that's fine. And we've got a ton of creatures. Coral Commando doesn't do much other than have a three power, so we'll cut him. Undercity's Embrace is good. Grotesque Demise is good. Steeple Creeper is good. We'll cut the Sylvan Brush Striders. Okay. Thirsting Shades? I mean, I could just use these as little puny blockers, but I do have to cut cards, so why don't we cut them? And I want to keep the Fairy Duelist in there. Blade Brand is, is going to stay. Priest of the Forgotten Gods is going to stay. Why? I don't know. Judith is out. Spike Wheel Acrobat is out. Macabre Mockery is out. Okay, all the red has got to go. Island Swamp Forest... I don't like the low swamp count here. I only need one, but that one might not come. I'm much more comfortable at four swamps and six forests. Uh, I can't do Frilled Mystic without islands and forests anyway, but I do have a Summit Guild Gate, so I'm okay with that. Other than that, I don't see a reason to go with more forests than islands. I think I think this is a pretty good ratio. All right, let's look at what we got here. 14 creatures, 13 non-creatures, 44 cards. Okay, so now I don't, I no longer like this ratio. So let's drop Root Snare. Let's drop, let's drop, mm, Blade Brands after all. That gives us 40. 14 creatures, not bad. Ill-Gotten Inheritance is one of them. Which actually, I don't like Ill-Gotten Inheritance at all. It's actually kind of hilarious to have life total changes like that. It's a two-point swing. They lose one, you gain one. Mm -hmm. Let's drop the Priest. Let's drop Ill-Gotten. And let's bring back a couple of our other creatures that we liked. We're good, 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 good here. And then I maybe... So the question becomes, do I bring back two or three? I like two drops, and I like the dig with Sulhana's Wayfinder. So now let's take a look. Fifteen creatures, eight non-creatures, seventeen land. That's right where I want to be. I've got nine cards in a two-drop space. That's pretty good. Five, four, four. This is... it's My top end's a little high, but that's okay. Sometimes you can swing them with a the top end and, and really make some things work. Let's call it a day. Simic... For the win. Or for the whatever, if that's your if that's our, our preference here. So I'm back. We're gonna go ahead and get this party started. Game one is underway. Okay. We are going first. And I like what I see. I really like what I see. I've got a Fairy Duelist. A Growth Spiral. So I'm definitely going to hang on to this hand. So the Fairy Duelist serves as like a combat trick, mostly. This is, this is terrific. So we can play our Growth Spiral. Oh. Well... I should have obviously stopped uh, priority. I don't know why it didn't it didn't stop my opponent's end phase. Thanks for that. That's highly upsetting. We'll grab our gate. I'm 
I'll just do it the slow way. That's fine. We'll drop our guild gate into play. Okay. And that gives us enough to play Frilled Mystic. Cool. And we're on for a Mammoth Spider next turn, so we should have a decent blocker. I don't think he can do too much about my hand. So, in other words, he can't make me discard too many, too many of my awesome things. But this is nice to get all that land out so early. I've got a couple of black cards that I still can't cast, but I'm okay with that for now. <clears throat> the Senate Courier is a little weird, but flying is pretty strong in uh, in draft because there aren't a lot of flying creatures. So having a 1-4 and a 1-2 that fly is is good. He'll find that out with his afterlife creatures when he can't attack me, or, or they die. Oh, that's pretty cool. His Undercity Scavenger is a little upsetting. And then the afterlife... Is the afterlife going to trigger? There it goes. So he's got two in the afterlife. But again, I've got flying, so I'm not super worried about it. Frilled Mystic isn't going to come down happily. Well, I could do... I see what I'll do. That's a good idea. Yeah, okay. We're just going to pass turn and play this more like a control setup. Where we've got six mana, so I could Frilled Mystic and Gift of Strength. Um... So if I Gift of Strength on my Frilled Mystic, she dies, which I don't want her to die. So we are going to block here, and then we will Gift of Strength our Mammoth Spider to remove his big beefy creature. That's good. Auto Tap did not hose us. We're, we're good to go. And then if, we, if he casts a spell to save his creature, we counter it with Frilled Mystic, and then we have Board Advantage, and we are very happy, so... He paid. Okay. Just Definitely want to take that action. He lost five health by doing that. And we've got our shark to crab. Let's see how good our shark to crab is going to be. So check this out. We're going to attack. We're going to swing in with everything. Hopefully he blocks. No, he didn't block. Okay. Well, he's at, he's at 9, so that's kind of nice. We'll use Fairy Duelist as a, as a combat shooter. They don't lifelink, so we're okay. Okay, here we go. For four, he can adapt. And for two, I can drop our dude. Eight. So check this out. We'll drop our fairy duelist. Reduce the... What's this? Viscopa Vampire's power to one. And then we will go ahead and adapt our Shark to Crab. We will tap a creature. This doesn't doesn't have any impact at all. Um, I could have adapted before combat and tapped this creature, but I wanted to... This, this board setup makes me happier. Where I've got more creatures than him, so, so I can make... Uh, he could be playing with Kaya's Wrath. That's highly possible in this, uh, in this draft with his current setup. Going for Afterlife. He goes with Grasping Thrall, which is not a terrible pick at all. But hopefully I've got enough power to get through. I think I do. Cool. Yep, Skitter Eel is working. I should have saved my Shark to Crabs. Ability, but yeah, it's whatever. It's fine. My he can kill my frilled mystic now. I don't care. It's done its job, and this is a lot of a lot of pressure coming his way. 
Um, he could gang block my shark to crab down. I don't think he will. He could block and kill my frilled mystic, and then he could jump block a couple of guys just to not take the damage. Block the mammoth spider, and then he's only getting out of here with taking one. So I don't think he's got a board wipe. Otherwise, we would have he wouldn't have blocked, and we would have seen it. Let's do main phase of growth spiral. Good. Good, 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 good. So, okay. Oh, we don't have a black. Haha! <laughs> Rats. So, if we were to exile the imperious oligarch, oligarch? I think it's oligarch. Um, the afterlife wouldn't take effect. Which is kind of nice. So, let's do. Let's just come after him. How about this? I lost my Frilled Mystic, that's who I lost. So he's going to block my Skitter Eel. With it. I will be adapting, because I don't want it to die. He's a two with another Spirit Token. That's kind of cool, but I think I've got too much power on the board at this point. I don't think he can overcome it. I think we're good. Another creature gets plus one, plus one. That's a... I don't like Hosda Officer. Alright, let's go. <clears throat> Just swing on home. He pretty much has to block everything. He doesn't have to block the Fairy Duelist. Uh, he's... Mm -mm. I'm not sure this is the wisest move he could make, but we'll go with it. For both of those creatures. Okay. And we'll drop our Humungulus. This might have been premature. I'm still leery that he's going to have Akaya's Wrath in his build. Okay, okay, he doesn't have it. That's excellent. Excellent for us. <clears throat> Good old two points for a win in the bronze tier. How about that? That's great. And we're up and running. See, that's the thing about drafting in both guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Allegiance. You just go with a guild, and, you know, whatever whatever guild cards start presenting themselves, that's <laughs> that's your deck. Uh, oh, this is good. I like this. Yeah, I like this a lot. I go first again. That That's so advantageous. Now, I remember to stop priority on my opponent's turn to play Growth Spiral. I got slowed down. A whole turn that last game. You know it's funny with Girl Spiral on turn two, puts us on pace to cast a turn three Steeple Creeper for three. Wait a minute. Oh well. You don't always get fast drafts. Although it is a turn three Frilled Mystic, if the mana works out. We need one more blue source. Looks like our opponent's having a tough time deciding on on a Mulligan. You might have to take one. That's no good. Okay, we're good. Green first. Oh, Rakdos. Okay, this could be... This could be interesting. Now, I want to... Stop on my opponent's end step, please. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, it's gonna stop on my end step. Fireblade Artist is strong. This is this is gonna be strong. Okay, well we got the green source we needed. So should we keep yeah, let's I'm just gonna keep um frill no, 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 we're going skittereal. Take it all back. Skitter is a nice blocker, so I want to get that down early. He's probably playing with a healthy amount of removal in the red and black space, um, but we this is a, a nice a nice break for us. Okay, terrific. <clears throat> terrific. 
All right. Okay, so we will just happily pass the turn. He's He could sacrifice, and I could take two. He doesn't do that. So if we draw land, we could do... We could um, adapt Skitter Eel, and then... Well, okay, so here's what I saved this for. I, I didn't... Uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and... He's got Death Touch. We're going to take the one. Or I could combat trick him here. See this? I could block, remove the... I'm just going to take the one. I could block, play the Fairy Duelist, and remove the... Um, stop on his end step. Does one damage to you when you draw a card. So I'm going to... Mystic that. I'm going to counter it. I don't know what he has, and I want to get some action early. So we're going to go ahead and counter his card draw. And then start in on our uh, our own version of aggro here. I'm going to swing in with everything. Then Lizrog is going to sweep in. Fairy Duelist comes down. Now we're going to combat trick his Fire Blade, get him off the board. And start with the the adapt aggro mess. Ill gotten. <clears throat> I'm okay with that because here we come. He's gonna block probably my steeple creep. He blocks the skitter eel. Okay, cool. That does diminish the power of my, my Galloping Lizrog when I play it. But I'm really concerned with board state, especially in drafts, because... Um, I want Mammoth Spider to get down. Because in drafts, if you can get through with your creatures, it's a win every time. I mean, it's that's the dumbest thing I've ever said. Um, there isn't so much removal that you're not going to attack into a settle the wreckage, stuff like that. So you don't really have to worry so much about... Oh, that was tricksy. Okay. Another Fireblade artist that I'm not worried about. I've got a flyer here, a flyer here. Character with reach. Well, I can't do that yet. We're going to have to give him flying. And just quietly swing in for five. So he took out my other steeple creeper, it's no problem. I've got another one. I've also got a shark to crab, <clears throat> which is nice. Okay, cool. And then we'll do a growth spiral at the end of uh, our opponent's turn. I, th this, I think this game is going to go our way. So I really hope he doesn't have another bomb in there that's gonna gonna cause some major damage. He does have three cards, so if he picked up, if he happened to get a spawn of mayhem, this game gets a whole lot trickier. A hackrobat, that's great. I like this because it triggers spectacle. So this is a nice deck that he's put together. This is kind of cool. Yeah, pestilent spirit's nice. Gonna go with our own growth spiral. Okay, cool. Incubation druid. That's kind of cool. I've got reach to block his flyer, so I wouldn't worry about that too much if he did attack. Okay. All right, kitty. Come on, girl. I'm going to drop my shark to crab. Oh, rather than make my flyer fly. It's okay. The game's going to go a little slower. He doesn't block. That's a little concerning. 
He could sacrifice creatures. He's got enough. But he's not, so he's going to rely on ill-gotten inheritance to do some damage. Which isn't a bad strategy. So he kills Shark to Crab. Scries one. That goes to the bottom. So that must have been a land. And I don't think he's ready to attack yet. Okay, here we come with Flyers. And I'm pretty sure he's going to block the Steeple Creeper. And he might be using this as an opportunity to hit me on the crackback, which is what I would do. It's exactly what I would do. So I will play... This Orzhov Enforcer has Death Touch, so so my Incubation Druid's going to die. I have to block. I don't want to be on the hook for... Uh, if if I get down to four, I'm dead, because he's got Ill-Gotten Inheritance and the mana to pop it. So I have to stay above four. So of the three creatures, I'm blocking. Um, I'm blocking the Hackrobat. I'm blocking the Firewheeler, and I'm blocking the uh, the Pestilent Spirit. So I'll take three, go down to seven. And then I can only hit him four. Sacrifices a creature. Hmm, this is not ideal. I'm going to have to sacrifice Let me see At the beginning of your No, so he can sacrifice it at any time for 6 mana He doesn't have the 6 mana So I could sacrifice my Incubation Druid Block 2 And then get him on the crack back I think, but gosh, that's not going to be enough Let's do it Oh, and he did gain the life. Okay, well, that's not, not the greatest thing ever. Oh, it's Menace and Death Touch. I appreciate that. Okay, so this this game was turned around pretty effectively by Rakdos. I don't like this at all. We'll drop Humongulus. No, that was dumb. I keep forgetting I've got to pay 4 mana. Um, but I think our opponent wins in either case. Pestilent Spirit is strong with Death Touch. Now, can he sacrifice any number of creatures? I don't think so. No, that still puts me at 4. Okay, so he's won the game. 1-1. One 1-1. One. One and you don't lose rating in the bronze, so we're good there. Glad he didn't pick up the uh, the Judith. That would be that would be fun to play in draft if all your creatures get plus one zero. That's nice. And then anytime they die, it deals one damage. Like it's Judith is pretty awesome. Hey, I like this a lot. Cool. So here's the thing, so the land goes into your hand, and then you can growth spiral and put it into play. It's kind of neat, so check this out. Oh, maybe he's on Esper. So we'll do, we'll do a Wayfinder. Gives us a creature. I don't think he's going to bother, uh, oh boy, so I'm not, I don't want to take the land for sure. A lot of good stuff here. A lot of good stuff here. Okay, so we're gonna grab the shark to grab. And then we're going to growth spiral. He grabbed a locket, huh? I don't have a land. So yeah, we may as well growth spiral main phase. Did not do what we were hoping, that's fine. I don't care if he gives his Twilight Panther Death Touch. It's not a not a concern at this point. Oh, I should have been on the hook for Incubation Druid. Oh, that would have been a better play. Um, but that's all right. That's all right. Okay. So 
But for five, she adapts to a three five. Obviously, I'm not blocking. I've never seen lumbering battlement like in play. That's kind of kind of a neat way to do it. Okay, this is going to get a little tricky. So we've got to get our shark to crab down. Still don't have a blocker for that lumbering battlement. That's strong. Until we adapt. So we won't attack just yet. We'll adapt our shark to crab. Unless he's, he's looking at it. So it must mean he's got something to make it go away. And that would not make me very happy. And then next turn. So we might take... God, we might take six this turn. That's going to hurt. But then I can play with any luck. Well, I can. I can play my mammoth spider. Unless he kills my incubation druid. Then I can block flying. I'm still on the hook for that lumbering battlement though. That's disappointing. <laughs> I'm going to take it all. Clank. And then next turn... I could... Gift of Strength. Why am I not getting lit? Okay. Yeah. So I will... Will I have the green for this? I will. I could... Solana Wayfinder. I'm going to definitely dig for a land here. And then Gift of Strength, my Shark to Crab, and block his Lumbering Battlement. Unless he picked up a counter spell. Okay, so it's all land. We're going to go with a blue... That's what we need. Pass the turns. Mm -hmm. I would love to keep the Frilled Mystic down for a counter spell, but that's all right. I like, I love Dovin's Acuity. It's nice. He's got three black, which I, I like. Attacking, attacking. So let's go ahead and block with the Krabby. And hope he doesn't have any combat tricks of his own. Although, I don't think there's anything in the black space that would help him out too greatly. Unless he's got a... For three? Well, he's got four. Oh, well, so he can do a white or a blue. That's where Frilled Mystic would have come in handy. Why don't we adapt our incubation grid? Serves as a nice blocker. And she can also tap for three mana. Hmm. Okay, so we can't get our Frilled Mystic down, but I could do a Fairy Duelist. And then I could adapt my shark to crab and make him a 1-5, which is also going to give me a nice blocker. Hmm. Okay. Block here. Oh, well, that's I can't cast this in response, right? That's unfortunate. Still drop the duelist. Yeah, but then I can't choose as a blocker. Okay, so the timing doesn't exactly work out in my favor. Hmm. That was a crazy trick he just pulled. Cry of the Carnarium after combat. Okay. Well, this game's not looking so favorable anymore either. This slime bind. Yeah, it's it's good. Pretty good.
Mammoth Spider threatens both of his flyers, so hopefully he thinks twice. He did. Good, good, good. This really slowed me down, though. Okay, so now can I... It's a four and a three adapt, so I could adapt Skitter Eel. It doesn't really get me all that far, but I can still do it. Okay, so we're going to drop the second flyer to use as a blocker. And hang on to Gift of Strength to use as a combat trick. And with any luck, we'll be able to turn this game around. There goes Ill-Gotten Inheritance. I guess I should play it in the deck. It's not, not a terrible... Terrible card. Just tap a creature just for fun. Why don't we just see if my Senate courier will get through? I don't think he will. That's not a good idea to do anyways. So I will die on the crackback. Yeah, okay, so ill-gotten inheritance should be drafted. I get it now. Good to know. That's the second game in a row. Ill-gotten inheritance has won the draft. He drops the locket to draw the cards. That's nice. Okay. And he can death touch his panther, too. So, hmm. Yep, only a matter of time. He might just be waiting us out, because I can't attack at this point, or else I die. I could swing in for five, but then he makes his Twilight Panther have Death Touch. Do I counter spell the next? I do. I can't let him have another flyer. Mm -hmm. So he might have saved up something really awesome in there, but I can't take the chance on him getting another flyer. I'm just too low on health. And the only way I'm going to make this work is if I give myself a fighting chance by countering whatever he's got. Otherwise, we are we are looking at another loss. But let's just see. Yeah, okay. We'll hang on to open the gates. Humongulus doesn't fly, which is a little disappointing. Let's start in on the ground game here. He could just take this and be happy about it. He certainly does not have to block. He, he probably will, and I'll probably give his Twilight Panther death touch. Yeah. And if it were me, I would be happy just to let Ill-Gotten Gains or ill-gotten inheritance do uh, do the rest of his ill-gotten gains. Would that come out of like mirage? But we'll see what we got going on. He could. Oh, that's game. Duh. I'm at four. So yeah, he doesn't even have to do that. I forgot. My bad.